HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back to our latest edition of our uh, Strategic Partners Initiative uh, podcast series where we talk to the best and brightest in corporate minds uh, supporting the historically black college and university sector uh, through workforce development and training opportunities. Today, our distinguished guest uh, is coming to us all the way from the west side, from Lyft, and she is Monica Poindexter, the head of inclusion and diversity uh, for the great company Lyft. So, uh, Ms. Poindexter, great to have you on today. Thank you, Jared. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So Lyft is is one of the early and uh, most aggressive um, companies that has been uh, very involved and very public uh, with support of historically black colleges. And not just from a perspective of ride sharing. I think one of the first initiatives um, was a project with Paul Quinn College in Dallas, Texas, where a portion of uh, proceeds from ride sharing went back to the university, but also in the in the way of training and development professionally uh, for students and graduates of HBCUs. Can you talk a little bit about how Lyft kind of got started uh, into the HBCU space uh, and why it's so important uh, to be involved with the sector at large? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that. And uh, let me just first start off with um, by saying that when we look at the why um, we are uh, supporting HBCUs, it is a broader um, discussion just around uh, recognizing that there has been a lack of progress, increasing diversity uh, overall in the tech industry. And so when we look at um, what are those strategic opportunities for us uh, to look at the not only the challenge, um, but the opportunity to uh, increase the workforce diversity, it is going to be through strategic partnerships uh, as well as uh, understanding where and how um, we can leverage the Lyft brand as well as these partnerships to increase our overall workforce diversity. So the uh, relationships that we uh, have started to establish um, early on in our uh, journey um, are with, uh, organ- uh, with uh, campuses like Howard University, Hampton University, Morehouse College, Morgan State University, North Carolina A&T, uh, Spelman, uh, and then we also have um, uh, partnerships and events, webinars, virtual, because we do recognize that um, geogra- ge- geography can sometimes be a challenge. We're also piloting um, some events and webinars at Fisk University and Tennessee State University. Um, so we're actually very excited with these partnerships, and while we're early on in, in the partnerships, we do fully expect that we will continue to yield um, higher impact, but also increase lift brands and trust. Um, with the uh, HBCU campuses, uh, but more importantly with the actual students that we want to be able to uh, hire um, in the short term. So that's, that, that's one piece. The HBCU aspect is uh, really being able to recognize and leverage um, the fact that HBCUs uh, do contribute and do uh, produce a very large or significant percentage, 42% of black engineers. And so when we look at how do we actually leverage the pipeline of talent that HBCUs are um, generating, how do we as a tech industry um, leverage that talent pipeline, develop it, hire it, retain that talent, and then also ensure that that talent is um, strategically influencing our product design, um, as well as uh, helping to um, brand our products and how we actually um, market our products to a diverse marketplace. So the why uh, with the partnerships and the how through the HBCUs is just one aspect that we want to continue to be able to leverage on. Um, We are early in our journey um, with the HBCU partnerships. Um, and that is uh, being uh, demonstrated through the investment that we have made to uh, hire uh, specialists um, that are focused on HBCU efforts um, through our university programs, through internships, as well as ensuring that we can get those internships converted to uh, new grad hires. So while we're early in the journey, we want to ensure that we have the partnerships and the strategy to support our both short-term and long-term efforts, uh, increasing workforce diversity. Talk about developing that partnership, because a lot of companies and particularly in the tech sex, tech sector in recent years have stressed the importance of we got to become more diverse because we understand that if you if you leave out certain groups of people, you are leaving behind a significant part of the nation's brain trust. So that that's easy <laughs> math. Um, but it's it's difficult to figure out, OK, well, where do you find talented uh, people of color? Where do you find people in communities that aren't typically exposed to those kind of opportunities, but could be uh, excelling beyond those those kind of restraints. How does Lyft actually develop that talent pipeline, identify it, and develop that strategy around the sector? 
Yes, very good. So I think it does start with um, being very intentional um, with the schools, HBCUs that we do partner with and, and, and having um, a criteria around um, who we partner with and why we partner. And I think a lot of that is uh, really coming from the, um, the faculty and then also the curriculum uh, that they are offering uh, to their HBCU students. Um, and then also looking at their uh, placement rates uh, for their uh, students that are coming and, and matriculating out of their programs. And also the, uh, the willingness to be able to partner to help influence uh, content and curriculum so that as we are designing and developing um, uh, new content, new products, uh, and really disrupting the marketplace with new technologies, we also want to be sure that there is the opportunity um, to be able to partner and to influence um, how the HBCU, HBCUs and faculty uh, can actually help to incorporate uh, some of these uh, new technologies, innovations uh, into what are they actually presenting to their uh, students through a curriculum um, perspective. So if we take autonomous vehicle, um, mm -hmm. for example, um, you know, when we think about it, I'm just going to make it very real. Um, I don't know how many members of my family, um, agnostic to how old they are, would, would feel comfortable getting into a, uh, a self-driving uh, car. Right. Um, but if we, and, and if you think about your own family members, how, how comfortable would they be getting into a, a, a self-driving car? Mm -hmm. And so when we think about how does it actually relate to the products, the, the technology, but also the early adopters, um, for these services and the unique um, uh, ways in which the uh, marketplace is actually evolving and our technologies are evolving, I would feel much more comfortable if I knew that these products and services were actually being designed by diverse engineers um, who, who understood um, how to um, help us understand how do we actually open up our mindset that there is um, a safety uh, considerations, but also uh, cultural considerations that we that we need to be mindful of of how do we even position autonomous vehicle in diverse uh, marketplace and diverse communities. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about um, just early adopters and how diverse talent can actually help us do that more effectively, um, that to me is, is a way in which leveraging fac leveraging diverse faculty, uh, really being able to inf influence curriculum uh, designs, ensuring that we actually have um, diverse students in these uh, internships. Um, will help us a better position um, not only the products and services, but also um, how do we actually go to market in some in, in our diverse communities. I mean, it does begin and end with do we understand um, the technology? Do we have the right uh, people on the design, product design teams, and also ensuring that um, the schools that we're partnered with uh, uh, have the means to be able to have the, the curriculum that is actually being accessed by the students or and available to the students Let's talk for them to access. Let's talk a little bit about tech culture. So we hear stories, not necessarily of Lyft, but other Silicon Valley uh, organizations and, and, and corporations that that struggle um, not to bring in uh, minority and people of color to work, uh, but that their retention numbers are low because a lot of times uh, they, they aren't the most welcoming communities. Can you talk about some of the things that Lyft does uh, to specifically promote cultural, uh, not only just diversity, but inclusion and welcoming uh, for all kinds of people at your shop. Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad that you brought that up because um, I think that um, we have seen that um, we do put a lot of effort on bringing in the talent, diverse talent to the organization. Um, and we equally need to uh, invest in the resources around retaining and developing that talent. And I do not think um, that, that we all have a, a, a one-shot bullet that is going to um, impact both the bringing in the talent and uh, retaining the talent. But it is uh, being uh, more holistic with our strategies and also leveraging uh, the existing diverse talent that we have within our workforce so that that talent is not actually leaving out um, the organization because of um, either real or perceived barriers uh, in, in the organization, um, lack of advancement opportunities, equitable um, uh, ways in which they are being developed within the organization. Um, and so how do we actually leverage our employee resource groups, which is one way in which not only are employee resource groups uh, a magnet for diverse talent, but it also is an opportunity for the organization to leverage the cultural insights of our ERGs to help with product enhancements, to also help with increasing our cultural competence. And I think that if we as, as industry can do a better job of leveraging um, the insights 
um, and, 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 and being able to leverage those cultural insights from our ERGs and understanding when, when they do have unique uh, experiences that are real for them, that we take that um, into consideration on how do we actually develop retention efforts, development efforts, and how do we unpack what those experiences are so we can uh, provide a more inclusive experience uh, for our diverse employees so that we can uh, either slow down the leaky pipeline. Because here's the reality is that this, the, 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 the uh, tech talent, um, it's not being regenerated, but it's actually being uh, moved from one tech company to another. Mm. So if, we, if, each, each, if each tech company can retain their existing uh, diverse talent, then we can actually start to make some incremental progress by building on top of the workforce that we have versus trying to supplement or replace who we've lost um, with the new hires that we're actually trying to bring in. And then the final question, and and we we really appreciate your insight today. Um, If you were to advise college presidents, board members, specifically at HBCUs, um, who want to join this growing coalition of yours in reaching out to HBCU faculty and students, but they don't have an existing relationship with your office or from reps from Lyft, how would you advise them to start to build that relationship or to to look for the, the pathways to that relationship and where can they get more information about your HBCU initiatives? Mm-hmm. So I think um, we're really leveraging uh, the strategic partnerships that industry, academia, and government are really trying to establish and forge together. Because this is this this the, the challenge, the tech challenge, tech tech diversity challenge. Um, it's not just industry; it is a co- it is a systemic challenge. And I do think that if we collectively um, can uh, align our partnerships, in which we are starting to do even more effectively with the Congressional Black Cauc- uh, uh, Cauc- Caucus (CBC), um, where industry, academia, and government can convene. Um, and be able to actually start to make, not only build the relationship, build the trust, and then also to be able to start to um, make headway on one to two or three consistent initiatives that all tech companies can work towards specifically to increase um, diversity within the workforce. And I think leveraging uh, the CBC and the tri caucuses to help um, with some of these efforts and to be a unifier voice for industry, academia, and government so that we can actually ha- have some translation of where what are the gaps, what are the opportunities, and then more importantly, what are the levers that we all could work on within our respective areas so that we can actually uh, rise the tide in all areas, both for industry, academia, and government, so we can address this systemically. Um, and it's not just an industry problem, but it truly is um, a trifecta uh, a challenge, but also could be a trifecta solution.